Yellowstone National Park could be sitting on a time bomb. There is a super volcano underneath the national treasure. The ground is just so saturated, and just beyond that is the Yellowstone River. That is still very swollen. Yellowstone National Park, a marvel of nature, hides a seismic secret that's now trembling to the surface. Hundreds of earthquakes have struck the region, and scientists are on high alert. Is this the prelude to the catastrophic eruption foretold by experts? Or is there something even more mysterious at play beneath the geysers and hot springs? Join us as we delve into the recent reports, uncovering what they mean for Yellowstone and perhaps for the entire world. Something remarkable is happening, and you won't want to miss what scientists have discovered. The history of Yellowstone is written in the ash and lava that lie beneath its forests and geysers. The park has experienced three major eruptions in the past 2.1 million years, each one contributing to the formation of the Yellowstone Caldera, a volcanic depression that is a hallmark of the park's current geography. The first of these eruptions occurred approximately 2.1 million years ago, producing the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff. This event was so massive that it created a caldera approximately 75 kilometers wide and deposited volcanic materials over a vast area. The power of such an eruption is difficult to comprehend, but the evidence lies in the thick layers of tuff, a type of rock formed from volcanic ash that can be found throughout the region. But what could cause such a massive eruption? The answer lies beneath the surface, where a reservoir of molten rock, or magma, builds up pressure until it is released in a catastrophic explosion. The Huckleberry Ridge eruption was one of the largest the world has ever seen, but it was not the last for Yellowstone. Around 1.3 million years ago, the park witnessed another significant eruption, known as the Mesa Falls Tuff. Though smaller than the first, this eruption still had a profound impact on the landscape, further shaping the caldera and altering the geology of the region. The most recent of the major eruptions, occurring 640,000 years ago, produced the Lava Creek Tuff. This eruption expelled over 1,000 cubic kilometers of material and was responsible for the formation of the current Yellowstone Caldera, measuring 45 by 85 kilometers. The caldera is a reminder of the immense forces that continue to shape our planet. Following these explosive events, the park's volcanic activity took on a different character. Approximately between 180,000 and 70,000 years ago, Yellowstone saw the eruption of large volumes of rhyolitic lava flows, which were primarily distributed along two north-south alignments of vents within the caldera. These flows added new layers to the geological storybook of Yellowstone, but they were not accompanied by the same level of explosivity as the earlier tufts. But why has Yellowstone been quiet for so long? Could it be that the forces that drove the previous eruptions have subsided, or is it merely a lull in a longer cycle of activity? The park's geysers and hot springs are evidence that the volcanic heat engine is still active below the surface, and the ground continues to rise and fall with the breathing of the earth. The park is also no stranger to earthquakes, which can be a sign of moving magma. The nearby Teton and Hebgen Lake faults have seen significant seismic activity, including a 7.5 magnitude earthquake in 1959 that caused considerable damage. These earthquakes are reminders that the earth beneath Yellowstone is far from dormant. Now imagine the ground beneath your feet trembling, the landscape around you reshaped in a matter of moments. This is the reality of the seismic activity that has just been recorded at Yellowstone National Park. In a startling disclosure, park officials have reported hundreds of earthquakes hitting the region in a remarkably short span of time. But what does this flurry of seismic activity mean for the park, known for its geothermal wonders and majestic natural beauty? Are we on the brink of witnessing a significant geological event? Yellowstone National Park is no stranger to seismic activity. It is one of the most seismically active areas in the United States. On average, the park experiences around 1,500 to 2,500 earthquakes annually. Most of these tremors are minor, often going unnoticed by the public, but their presence 
is a constant reminder of the dynamic forces at work below the surface. The majority of these seismic events are not felt by humans and are detected by the sophisticated Yellowstone Seismic Network, which consists of about 50 seismometers. These instruments are operated by the University of Utah Seismograph Stations, and the data they collect are transmitted in real time using a radio and satellite telemetry system. Despite the challenges posed by harsh winter conditions, which can see heavy snowfall and frigid temperatures disrupt the operation of these seismometers, the UUSS works diligently to analyze and report earthquake data. But what is particularly intriguing about Yellowstone's seismicity is the occurrence of earthquake swarms. These swarms, which are clusters of earthquakes that occur in close succession both in time and location, account for about 50% of the total seismic activity in the park. They can happen anywhere within Yellowstone, but are most commonly observed in the east-west band of seismicity stretching from Hebgen Lake to the Norris Geyser Basin. Most swarms are relatively small, containing 10, 20 earthquakes, and are short-lived, typically lasting one, two days. However, there have been instances of larger swarms that include thousands of earthquakes and persist for months. Since 1973, over 48,000 earthquakes have been located in the Yellowstone region, with over 99% of these being magnitude 2 or below, too small to be felt by anyone. But why do these swarms occur? The answer lies in the geological makeup of Yellowstone. The park sits atop a volcanic hotspot, a place where heat from the Earth's mantle is able to reach closer to the surface. This heat is a driving force behind the geothermal features that Yellowstone is famous for, such as geysers and hot springs, but it also plays a significant role in the park's seismic activity. The Earth's crust in Yellowstone is constantly in motion, albeit at a pace that is imperceptible to us on a day-to-day -day basis. This movement is not just horizontal, as with the sliding of tectonic plates, but also vertical. The ground can rise and fall based on the pressures exerted by the underlying magma chamber. Imagine a breathing giant lying beneath the surface, with each breath causing the ground to swell or contract. This is not a rapid inhalation or exhalation, but a slow, measured process that can take years. The magma chamber itself is a colossal reservoir of semi-molten rock, and its movements are a key factor in the seismic activity of the region. As magma rises, it can cause the crust to expand and crack, leading to earthquakes. Conversely, when the magma retreats, the crust can deflate, also resulting in seismic events. This rise and fall of the magma chamber is not a smooth, continuous process, but occurs in fits and starts, contributing to the swarms of earthquakes that periodically rattle the region. Hydrothermal fluids also contribute to the seismicity of Yellowstone. These are waters that have been heated by the geothermal gradient of the Earth's interior and can become superheated by the magma chamber. As they move through the crust, they can alter the rock, sometimes weakening it, which can lead to earthquakes. Furthermore, these fluids can build up pressure as they move, and when this pressure is released, it can trigger seismic events. Lastly, the gravitational pull of the sun and moon can have a subtle but discernible effect on the Earth's crust, a phenomenon known as tidal forces. While these forces are more commonly associated with the rise and fall of ocean tides, they can also affect the solid Earth, potentially triggering earthquakes. In Yellowstone, where the crust is already under strain from the forces mentioned above, these tidal forces can sometimes be the final nudge that causes the ground to shake. But what does this mean for the future? Could these earthquake swarms be a prelude to something more disastrous? The recent surge in seismic activity at Yellowstone National Park has reignited concerns and speculations about the potential for a supervolcano eruption, a cataclysmic event that could have profound consequences not only for the immediate vicinity, but for the climate and society on a global scale. The term supervolcano refers to a volcano capable of producing an eruption with ejecta volumes greater than 1,000 cubic kilometers, which is thousands of times larger than most historic volcanic eruptions. Yellowstone has experienced three such super eruptions in the past 2.1 million years, making the possibility of another such event, however remote in human timescales, a subject of legitimate scientific inquiry and public fascination 
But why would Yellowstone go super volcano? The park sits atop a vast reservoir of magma, a remnant of a hot spot that has been active for millions of years. This magma chamber is fed by heat rising from deep within the Earth's mantle, and its pressure can build over time. If this pressure becomes too great, it could lead to a massive release of magma in the form of a super eruption. The chances of this occurring are exceedingly slim in any given year. However, the potential exists, and the signs of unrest, such as the recent earthquake swarms, are reminders of the volcanic power that lies beneath Yellowstone. The magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is fed by a plume of hot rock that originates deep within the Earth's mantle. The heat from this plume partially melts the rock of the lower crust, creating the magma that fills the chamber. As the magma accumulates, it undergoes a process known as differentiation. The magma is a mixture of molten rock, crystals, and dissolved gases, and over time, the heavier elements sink while the lighter elements rise. This can lead to the formation of a highly pressurized cap of less dense, more viscous magma at the top of the chamber. It is this cap that could potentially act as a seal, allowing pressure to build to the point where it could trigger a supervolcanic eruption. The supervolcanic potential of Yellowstone is also linked to the immense size and depth of its magma chamber. Recent studies using seismic imaging techniques have revealed that the chamber is much larger than previously thought, extending over an area of about 90 kilometers by 30 kilometers and reaching depths of up to 15 kilometers. This vast reservoir has the capacity to store enormous amounts of magma, and the deeper sections contain molten rock at higher temperatures and pressures. The question is, are we prepared for the day when the Earth decides to reveal the full extent of Yellowstone's power? The eruption of such a supervolcano would be unlike any event humanity has witnessed in recorded history. The immediate consequences would be catastrophic. The explosive release of ash and volcanic gases, the collapse of infrastructure, and an undeniable loss of life within the vicinity. But the aftermath of such an eruption would extend far beyond the immediate destruction, casting a shadow over the Earth that could last for years, a volcanic winter. A volcanic winter is not a cold season marked by snow and ice, but a chilling period of global climatic cooling. It occurs when a volcano ejects massive quantities of sulfur dioxide, SO2, ash, and dust into the stratosphere, far above the Earth's weather systems. Once aloft, these particles and gases form a veil that reflects sunlight away from the Earth, reducing the amount of solar radiation that reaches the surface. The result is a drop in global temperatures, a phenomenon that has been recorded following significant volcanic events in the past. The scale of a Yellowstone eruption could mean the injection of such vast amounts of ash and gas into the atmosphere that the sun's rays might be dimmed for years. This reduction in sunlight would not only lead to cooler temperatures, but could also disrupt photosynthesis, the very foundation of the Earth's food chain. Crops could fail, leading to food shortages and famine. The delicate balance of ecosystems would be thrown into disarray, with some species struggling to survive in the altered climate. Moreover, the ash fallout would be extensive. The fine particles can spread over the continent, blanketing the land, clogging rivers and streams and destroying crops. The weight of the ash could collapse buildings, and when mixed with rain, form a concrete-like substance that is difficult to remove. In terms of the economic impact, the cost of cleanup, the loss of agricultural productivity, and the disruption to air travel and trade would be felt worldwide. The ash cloud could ground airplanes, as the abrasive particles can sandblast a jet's windshield and get into the engines, causing them to fail. The financial markets would likely react with uncertainty, leading to economic instability. Yet despite the potential for such a cataclysm, the Earth does not operate on human timescales. The chances of a supervolcanic eruption at Yellowstone in any given year are exceedingly low, but the Earth's geologic record is a testament to the fact that what has happened can happen again. In the midst of this uncertainty, the recent uptick in seismic activity has brought a renewed focus on any potential effects on the wildlife and ecology of Yellowstone. Earthquakes can open new channels for hot water to flow or block old ones, leading to the creation of new geysers or the extinction of others. These changes can, in turn, affect the habitats and food sources of various animal species. 
Some animals, like the pronghorn, may sense the coming tremors before humans do and flee to safer ground. Others, such as bears, may be startled by the quakes, but quickly return to their routines once the ground stills. Birds might take flight en masse at the first tremor, while aquatic creatures like fish could be disturbed by the changes in their watery environment caused by shifts in the geothermal systems. The question of how the park's flora and fauna adapt to these disturbances is a critical one. Yellowstone's ecosystem is a complex web of interdependencies, and the ripple effects of seismic activity can be far-reaching. Plants that thrive in the warm, moist conditions created by geothermal activity might find their growing areas reduced or enlarged by seismic shifts, affecting the insects that feed on them and the birds that feed on those insects. But what about the human visitors and the very infrastructure that allows millions to witness Yellowstone's wonders each year? How do park officials safeguard against the unpredictable might of the Earth? And what happens when the very ground beneath our feet betrays us? Historically, Yellowstone has seen its share of damage from earthquakes. The most notable in recent history, the Hebgen Lake earthquake of 1959, caused significant alterations to the landscape and resulted in loss of life and property. In the wake of such events, park officials have developed and refined their strategies for public safety. Evacuation routes are clearly marked, and staff are trained to guide visitors to safety in the event of a significant seismic event. The park also works closely with geologists and seismologists to understand the risks and to develop emergency preparedness plans. But how can we truly prepare for the force of nature? The park's infrastructure is designed to be resilient, but the power of a major earthquake can test the limits of human engineering. In the event of substantial seismic activity, the response of park officials and the effectiveness of the infrastructure in place would be put to the ultimate test. Thanks for watching this episode of Beyond Discovery. Don't miss the video you see on your screen, you won't believe it.